Good morning, Chairman Duffy, Ranking Member Cleaver, and members of the subcommittee. Thank you for the opportunity to provide this testimony today. I've worked at the intersection of homelessness and education for nearly 25 years, and I've witnessed many improvements over that time. But HUD's definition of homelessness and its national priorities have created real barriers to helping homeless children and youth. As a result, we are perpetuating homelessness. We are guaranteeing that homelessness will continue indefinitely. The Homeless Children and Youth Act will help ensure that today's homeless children and youth do not become tomorrow's homeless adults. Let me put this debate in context. I worked with a student who stayed in the house with 11 adults and four children because her mother was mentally ill and kicked her out. All the adults in the house used cocaine. Many of them worked in a strip club. The student provided childcare in exchange for a roof over her head. But she said this was better than other situations she'd been in because a lot of guys want to get something out of you. She was in high school. As this committee knows, federal agencies do use different definitions of homelessness. And with few exceptions, in practice, the HUD definition only includes people living in shelters or outdoors. Under HUD's definition, the student I described is not homeless. In contrast, the definition used by the Department of Education and other federal agencies includes children and youth who are staying in motels or are staying temporarily with others due to loss of housing, economic hardship, or a similar reason. This definition reflects reality. Schools are present in every community, even those without shelters, even those where shelters are full. So contrary to the picture painted by HUD, school numbers have increased by 34% since the end of the recession, now totaling 1.3 million homeless students. Head Start homeless numbers have nearly doubled, and new research shows that child homelessness often leads to youth homelessness and then to adult homelessness, where children of homeless adults may start this cycle again. HUD's definition contributes to this damaging cycle by preventing some of the most vulnerable homeless children and youth from accessing services. Also, it keeps them invisible, which limits both public and private action. Make no mistake, the children and youth who meet education's definition are every bit as vulnerable as those who meet HUD's definition. And my written testimony documents the same poor academic, health, and mental health outcomes of all homeless students, regardless of where they sleep. It also shows how frequently families and youth move between education homeless and HUD homeless. In fact, when I described this debate to a remarkable young woman who stayed in all sorts of homeless situations, her response to me was, the open sky never made me bleed. Yet homeless children and youth who don't meet HUD's definition are barred from even being assessed. The Homeless Children and Youth Act would allow children and youth whose homeless has been verified by one of eight federal programs to be assessed for services rather than basing their eligibility very simplistically on where they happen to find a place to sleep. Just last week, we tried to assist a young couple with a toddler who are expecting their second child. They're staying in a toxic household with other people. They'll be kicked out in a month. They have nowhere to go. But coordinated entry in their community said they weren't in a place from which they could get evicted, so they're not eligible for prevention assistance, and they don't meet HUD's definition of homelessness, so they aren't eligible for homeless assistance. But under the Homeless Children and Youth Act, an early Head Start program could verify the family's homelessness, and they could be assessed. So the trajectory of four lives, including their unborn child, could change for the better. But beyond definitions, HUD has deprived communities of the flexibility that they need by creating strong national incentives of housing models in certain populations. They don't meet all communities' needs. The high school student I work with, she couldn't benefit from rapid rehousing. She's too young to sign a lease. Rapid rehousing is failing many families who become homeless again, but they don't show up in HUD's metrics. Meanwhile, program models that have been successful in helping families leave homelessness and sustain their housing have been defunded. The Homeless Children and Youth Act would remedy this one-size-fits-all approach with scoring that's primarily based on the extent to which projects meet priorities in a local plan and are cost-effective to the local plan. In this way, it allows communities to respond flexibly to new challenges and opportunities. Please know that the Homeless Children and Youth Act has broad support from organizations that work directly with homeless children and youth. And we ask you to enact it so that homelessness will cease to rob millions of children youth, and adults of their full human potential. Thank you.